Chapter 8 is looking at global stratification, and, and I want to say that um, global income is very unequal, with the richest 20% of the world's people earning about 40 times as much as the poorest 20% do. Um, there are different types types of terminology that has been used by scholars to divide the nations of the world into several broad categories based on their level of economic development. Uh, we have high income countries which are the richest nations of the world with the highest overall standard of living. They include most of Western Europe, Canada, United States, Japan, Australia, New Zealand. There are about 64 um, high income countries in the world. As far as the middle income countries, these are nations with a standard of living about average for the world as a whole. These include the former Soviet Union, the nations of Eastern Europe, the oil producing nations of the Middle East. Uh, in South America, we have Venezuela and Brazil, and then we have Algeria and Botswana in Africa. And there's a total of like 73 uh, middle income countries in the world. Low income countries are nations with a low standard of living in which most people are poor. These countries are found in Central and Eastern Africa and in Asia. Um, and we're looking at about 57 low income countries. So class, we've got a total of 194 nations in the world. Poverty in poor countries is more severe than it is in the rich countries. This is partly a result of low economic productivity. Uh, once again, uh, you need to know the difference between absolute poverty and relative poverty. Absolute poverty is a very serious problem in the poorest nations. And of course, this is a lack of resources that is life-threatening. Relative poverty is more salient in the uh, more developed nations, and, and this is where people lack resources that's taken for granted by others. And relative poverty exists in every society, whether it's rich or poor. The extent and severity of child poverty is greatest in the low-income countries. It is in the low-income countries that uh, children die. Half of them never do reach their 10th birthday. And in the high income countries class, it's most, mostly elderly that face death, okay? Because we do have a longer life expectancy um, than the poor nations do. Poverty in children, there are 100 million children in poor countries that are forced to work the streets, such as beg, steal, sell sex. Tens of millions of children are orphaned uh, or have left their families and live on the streets. And many girls with little or no access to medical assistance do become pregnant. As far as women, 70% um, of the world's uh, 1 billion people living near absolute poverty are women. Um, in all societies, a woman's work is unrecognized, it's undervalued and underpaid. And also, sweatshop workers are mostly women. Poor societies have many problems in addition to hunger, including illiteracy, warfare, and even slavery. Slavery does still exist in, in many different forms. One is chattel slavery, where one person owns another. Child slavery includes abandoned children or children that's living on the street, and, and this is a more common form of bondage. Debt bondage, um, it, is, it occurs where people are paid less and they are charged for food or shelter, so employers are holding workers to pay their debts. Um, there are several forms of marriage. It's also considered to be slavery, such as when families marry off their women against their will, and of course human trafficking, which is the third largest source of profit to organized crime. 
Global power relations handicap the poorest nations. Historically, they were oppressed by colonialism, which is the process by where or by which some nations enriched themselves through political and economic control of other countries. But now, neocolonialism, which is a new form of global power relationship that involves not direct political control, but economic exploitation by multinational corporations. And in class, this is a more serious problem. If you don't know what a multinational corporation is, it's just a large corporation that operates in many different countries. They do operate profitably worldwide. There are two theories to explain the unequal distribution of the world's wealth and power. We have modernization theory and we have dependency theory. Modernization theory is a model of economic and social change that explains global inequality in terms of the different levels of technological development among societies. And according to Walt's, Walt Rostow, a modernization occurs in four stages. All nations begin with the traditional stage, and this is where we are socialized to honor the past. We build our lives around family and our local community. Uh, even today, class, many people, such as the Amish uh, community, is still in the traditional stage. Uh, some Islamic people in the Middle East, they, they all oppose new technology because they see it as a threat to their family relationships, customs, religious beliefs, um, whatever. Some nations are still here and, and remain poor, and they're, they're going to remain poor, uh, such as Niger, Somalia, Bangladesh, and we can go on and on and on with those poor income countries that are still in the traditional stage. Modernization theory does identify tradition as the greatest barrier to economic development. The second stage is the takeoff stage, and this is where people produce goods not only for their own use, but to trade with others for profit. So more or less class, they're shaking off the traditional stage where people begin to use their talents, which certainly is going to spark economic growth. Then the third stage is a drive to technological maturity, and then they may eventually reach high mass consumption. The dependency theory is a model of economic and social development that explains global inequality in terms of the historical exploitation of poor societies by the rich ones. And class, I want to say that poor countries have certainly become dependent on rich nations because they do sell raw materials to rich nations. The economic success of many wealthier nations was achieved at the expense of the poor countries. So make sure you remember that modernization theory more or less focuses on the production of wealth and the dependency theory focuses on the distribution of wealth. Emmanuel Wallerstein proposed a world systems theory to explain how global stratification developed. And according to Emmanuel Wallerstein's um, World Systems Theory or the Capitalist World Economy, rich nations are at the core of the world economy. The low-income nations are at the periphery of the world economy. And the remaining countries, which is the middle-income countries, are at the semi-periphery of the world economy. So according to Wallerstein, the world's economy, the world economy benefits rich societies by generating profit, but it harms the rest of the world by causing poverty. <laughs>